Hello, I'm Robert Massey, General Director of the Opera Festival of Chicago. Thank you very much for joining us for this special presentation. All of us at the festival look forward to sharing live performances of rarely performed Italian masterworks with you later this year. But until it's safe to do so, we're delighted to be able to connect with you virtually. In this performance, presented at Gans Hall at Roosevelt University, violinist Robert Hanford and festival music director Emmanuel Andrite present a musical presentation of pieces found in and inspired by Italian opera. Keeping with the opera festival's mission of presenting rarely heard works, we guarantee that some of the pieces will be new to you. And in fact, several of them have never before been performed in Chicago. The presentation is made possible thanks to the Chicago College of Performing Arts and of course to our donors. If you'd like to join us in bringing this music alive, please visit us online, operafestivalchicago.org. Enjoy the performance. Hi, my name is Franco Pomponia. I'm the festival president of the Opera Festival of Chicago. One of the cornerstones of the operatic repertoire is Giuseppe Verdi's La Traviata. The story, set in Paris, follows the famous courtesan, Violetta, and her young lover, Alfredo Germont. Violetta's love threatens to shame his family, so, like many of Verdi's heroines, our protagonist sacrifices her own happiness and, indeed, her life for Alfredo and his family. Our first piece tonight is the Fantasia on La Traviata by Antonio Bazzini. Bazzini, a Brescian violinist and composer, amalgamated his interest in this opera with his inspiration from the virtuoso violinist Paganini. This piece is the result of this combined inspiration.
Ruggero Leon Cavallo was born in Naples in 1857. A son of a police magistrate and judge, the young Leon Cavallo was moved around a lot. Success did not come easy and Ruggero struggled hard to get his works produced. It wasn't until after he saw the enormous success of Mascagni's Cavalleria Rusticana that he dived into the new style of Verismo and wrote his masterpiece, I Pagliacci. He derived the plot from a murder trial over which his father presided. Pagliacci's tremendous success has often eclipsed much of Leon Cavallo's other wonderful works, and tonight we hear his beautiful serenade for violin and piano. We should never forget that there are many more offerings by Leon Cavallo, some of which we intend to bring to your attention as the Opera Festival of Chicago continues to develop.
La Molinara, The Mill Girl, by Giovanni Paisiello, was first performed in 1788 and was an immediate hit, although you will be hard-pressed to find a performance of it nowadays. The beautiful Raquelina is courted by three suitors, Pistofolo, a notary, the governor, and a baron. At the end of amusing adventures, she challenges the three suitors by testing their ability to grind grain. It is ultimately Pistofolo who wins. The humorous libretto indulges in a biting satire of social morality and abuse of power. Raquelina wins the day using her beauty and logical practicality. The great violinist Paganini adapted the opera's final duet, Nel cor più non mi sento. Like most of Paganini's music, it's a staple of virtuoso violin playing and is in the form of variations which connects the music of Paisiello to Beethoven's piano variations on the same theme.
Pietro Mascagni was born in the Livorno, Tuscany in 1863. At 27, Mascagni won the prestigious Sonzogno contest for his opera Cavalleria Rusticana, Rustic Chivalry, which undoubtedly is his masterpiece. The one-act opera is a terse tale of Sicilian peasants, of passionate love, infidelity, jealousy, and death. The powerfully beautiful and famous intermezzo divides the opera in its 48 bars, the themes of what has transpired in part one and foreshadows the impending doom. The transcription for violin and piano performed tonight was written by our very own music director, Emanuele Enderizzi.
Ildebrando Pizzetti was born in Parma in 1880. Started his career as a playwright, writing several scripts in his teens, having produced two plays professionally before deciding on a career in music at the ripe old age of 15, and entering the Conservatory of Parma in 1895. He was a disciple of poet, playwright, and revolutionary Gabriele D'Annunzio. Pizzetti wrote incidental music for D'Annunzio's plays and was profoundly influenced by his dark neoclassic ideas. Pizzetti's powerful opera, Assassino nella Cattedrale, is his best-known opera based on T.S. Eliot's drama, Murder in the Cathedral, which premiered at La Scala in 1958. Tonight we hear Pizzetti's sonata in A major, Preghiera degli Innocenti, Prayer to the Innocents. We dedicate this piece to the victims of the COVID-19 pandemic.
Gaetano Donizetti was reaching his creative peak when he wrote Lucia di Lammermoor, based on Sir Walter Scott's novel, The Bride of Lammermoor, in 1835. Following his passion of adding an Italian flavor to deeply British works. Similar to Romeo and Juliet, it's the tragic story of two rival families, the Ashtons and the Ravenswoods, in a struggle for power and wealth with the ardent lover Edgardo di Ravenswood and the vulnerable Lucia Ashton caught haplessly in between. Secretly betrothed to Edgardo, but forced to marry another man she does not love, Lucia snaps, goes mad, and kills her unwanted husband in the wedding bed as he tries to consummate the marriage. It is the delightfully gory gothic tale wrapped in a virtuosic score that opera goers love. The piece you are about to hear is by Belgian romantic composer Henri Vieton. His composition, Fantasia, from Lucia de Lammermoor, Souvenir of Donizetti, for violin and piano, was composed in 1880. Vieton has left a lasting legacy in the realm of violin performance and has been a powerful influence throughout the world. Thank you. 